He was once a classical music rebel who ditched Mozart for heavy metal. But when Marco Latonia picked up a conducting baton, he was hooked. He's worked with Europe's top musicians and is now the new chief conductor of the Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra. Tamara Glumak reports. <laughs> It's a long way from classic rock to the classics. But that's the journey undertaken by the new chief conductor of the Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra. I went to play in a rock band when I was 16. We had a rock band and we played pretty much heavy metal and Led Zeppelin at the doors and they, you know all kinds of bands like this and then uh, later on I played a little bit of jazz and a little bit of piano bar. It was a chance encounter with an orchestra 28 years ago that made Marco Latonia change his tune. He was studying piano in the Slovenian capital Ljubljana when a friend suggested he join a conducting class. With the conducting I thought that there's nothing else but classical music. Before it was everything else but classical music. I started to, to, to uh, learn conducting and uh, after two months he gave me the opportunity to conduct a concert uh, with the school orchestra and that was like a drug. Once I, he, they put me in front of the orchestra, I was in heaven. I cannot explain, it was some, something, I think it's like a drug. It's an addiction that's led to a stellar career. Latonia has conducted a host of European orchestras, including the Vienna Symphony, the Munich Philharmonic and the Hamburg Symphony. But it was the sounds of the TSO that drew him to Hobart. There were a lot of recordings for the Tasmanian Symphony and I actually didn't know where it was. Uh, Tasmania sounded, could be, you know, everywhere in the world. I just knew there was some exotic location. Twice the crescendo, third times no crescendo. He considers the city home to one of the best small orchestras in the world. First impact when I, when I came here, I was really, really surprised by how tight this orchestra is, how tight the sound, how tight the rhythm is. It wasn't just the orchestra providing strong impressions. Latonia was drawn by Hobart's Antarctic and maritime connections. Just uh, standing on a, you know, standing in the port and looking, facing south. That was one thing. And then when you turn around and you see the mountain behind you, it's even more impressive. Thank you. The 50-year-old is a keen yachtsman who's looking forward to watching the Sydney to Hobart later this year. I have started with sailing about 20 years, eight years ago, and uh, very soon you understand where are the capitals, sailing capitals of the world. So you pretty much know then uh, that uh, one of the sailing capitals of the world is Hobart. Latonia's career was one forged from humble beginnings. Music wasn't in the family, but as a young child, he was fascinated by the neighbour's grand piano. I was tiny, and I, I remember that I couldn't actually see what is on top of the piano. It was just I loved the fact that the keys, when I put my hands on the keys, as this furniture would, would make some noise. Many years later, my parents asked me if I would love to play the piano, and I said, of course, yes, I would. I would. And then they saved a lot of money because it was uh, a big effort to buy an upright piano. At first, he thought his parents' sacrifice was in vain. At 11, I so much regretted my decision that, uh, yeah, I thought, like, because they made me practice every day. And if, when you're 11, you want to play ball. You don't want to play the piano. So that's the usual story. Given his early rock ambitions, it's no surprise to learn Latonia's not afraid to be controversial. In the late 1990s, he invited a heavy metal band to play with an orchestra in Europe. I organised a concert with, with them, chorals, organ, four soloists and the orchestra. And that was the opening of the European Month of Culture in Ljubljana, which was a big scandal. A suddenly, all of a sudden, I got new friends on the roads and I got 
I, old friends wouldn't, wouldn't say hello anymore to me because it was clearly something that, uh, that I have done which made, which divided the audience. He's not ruling out more crossover programs and is keen to introduce more Australian music into the orchestra. All that will make for a busy year for this international conductor who will split his time between Tasmania and Europe where he remains the music director of the Strasbourg Philharmonic Orchestra.